It's a beautiful Saturday here on C Major Before the Show. We're so happy to be with you. And we have lots to talk about. We're talking about flat chords. We're, we're sharing recital stories. I'm just so excited about today and this weekend in general. So lots to cover. C Major Porter, thank you so much for being with us on this beautiful Saturday. As I said, the weather could not be better here in the greater New York City area. That's something we've all waited for. You can feel the days changing, you know. We're having summer-like showers. It'll rain for a little bit, and then you think it's going to continue, and then all of a sudden the sun comes out. It's just wonderful to know that we're getting closer and closer to the summer that we've all been looking for. And it's such an exciting time. We had recitals this weekend. I'm going to be telling you about those. But I know what you're here for. You're here for flat chords. So I don't want to disappoint. I want to get into that because that's the information you need if you are studying music theory, if you're taking exams, if you're learning to play for yourself, whatever the case may be. You want to know how to get those flat chords sounding the way you want them to sound and I have a special attachment to flat chords. I, I've shared it on the podcast before, but I don't think I shared it the way that I really wanted to share it. But that's okay. I grew up with a lot of flat chords, let's just say. And it wasn't until I came to the Northeast that I started playing more in the sharp keys. For some reason, I found myself playing in the key of B a lot with five sharps which I'm totally comfortable with, but I'm thinking, what is the difference? It seemed that everything was raised for some reason, a few half steps. So imagine, I was cool and comfortable playing in the key of A flat, and then all of a sudden, I hit the New York area, and almost everybody's singing in the key of B major. But anyway, let's just get to the flat chords. You know, we've hit the halfway mark here in the Chords for All series and I'm very happy because that means that we are getting to that point where you really, really, really want to start applying some of this knowledge. So whether it's in the case of sheet music or if it's in the case of writing your own music, then flat chords are exciting halfway point because it only gets better from here. So congratulations to you. And you know, it is a long holiday weekend, so if you're not listening, I totally understand. We'll be here for you when you want to download the episode to listen to it at another time, so feel free to do that, but it's pretty much a a very um, inactive weekend for a lot of people because they're either on break from work or they are away from the greater New York City area. And so just enjoy it. I mean, I'm just really glad that you get this type of break for yourself and use it to have fun. So there's a lot going on this weekend. We talked about Memorial Day across the week. We talked about Fleet Week. We talked about Shelter After Hours. I'm going to be saying more about that. No, I am not a DJ, meaning one who works the turntables. I don't do that, but... I am very interested in DJing, and I happen to have experience with tractor software, and I have experience with some other some other DJ software that's that's out there that that serious DJs take take advantage of, so they can do what they do. The mixologists that are out there, they are just fantastic at what they do, and I am fascinated. I've always been fascinated with DJing. So, who knows? C major may learn to do some DJing on the serious on the serious side of DJing one day. 
So just hang in there for that. Now these flat chords we're going to take from the popular chord dictionary for piano book. This chord dictionary shows the notation, the fingering, the keyboard diagrams for all of the important chords used in modern popular music. Not that you won't find chords in classical music, of course you will, but this book is devoted to pop music, so it's just a quick way to see how everything is shaded in on the keys. And I remember looking at this book before and I was just not prepared to see everything in gray, shaded in gray. Also, feel free to use your plastic chord chart, the one with the red dots. You can use that too. We're not referencing that so much today. We're just going with the chord dictionary for piano and we're going with the piano chord finder. Also, let me say this. If you happen to hear some celebrations going on in the background, it's because a lot of people are celebrating this weekend. Memorial Day is, is a very serious holiday. Fleet Week is a serious celebration. And we'll try to, you know, say a little bit more about the occasions because it's it's a, it's a lighthearted weekend, but at the same time, it's a heavy weekend. If you think about the meaning of it all, and then I will say a little bit more about um, the other activities that are going on this weekend and then talk about recital. So hang in there for that. Hang with us if you can. So the original chord, piano chord finder. Let's take a look at that really quick. So basically to find any chord in the piano chord finder all you have to do is place the book right on the music stand of your piano you look up the letter name of the chord and then for example like a D ninth chord will be found it on the page that's headed or labeled D and then the letter names are arranged chromatically C D flat D E flat etc and all of the major chord types major augmented dominant seventh major seventh dominant seventh with a flat ninth dominant ninth are all on the left hand page and then all of the minor chord types minor minor seventh minor with a major seventh diminished seventh half diminished seventh minor ninth are all on the right hand page so if you need to know anything further about this book then feel free to check our syllabus so that you can see how to source this information for yourself so I jokingly said that we were calling today's episode Reduced Flat Chords, and we did refer to that in our promo for the week. So I hope you found that funny. And it's a serious matter, though, playing these flat chords, because if you can play flat chords, guess what? You can play one of the hottest songs out right now, which involves a piano and flat chords, which we will be sampling. Let me say it that way. It's a live sample. I'm not going to even name the, the name of the song. I'll let you figure it out yourself because I've learned that sometimes if I think something's hot, somebody else may not think it's hot or they may not even know about it. I was talking with a musician today and we started listing some of the the music that we were familiar with that really got us excited about music making. But because of where he's from, he didn't really recognize some of the same things that I was excited about, but at the same time, we did find one particular name of a musician that we were both agreed on. It was just amazing and has played some of the hottest tunes out there, but we'll get to that. Okay, so if you can play a, if you can play a D chord, guess what? There's good news. You can play a D flat chord. All you have to do is move everything to the left. So... Just think you're on your D chord, right? So you're playing D, F sharp, A. And then just move, literally, one key to the left. We call that moving a half step. Some people use the word semitone, whatever you're comfortable with. If you want to think of it as going from vanilla to fudge, if that helps you with the imagery of it all, then fine. So think D, F sharp, A. Vanilla, fudge, vanilla becomes fudge vanilla fudge all you have to do is just move everything a half step and so where I got that concept of vanilla and fudge was one of my younger students was studying a book that 
tried to make it more kid friendly and just talked about the flavors of cookies and turning those flavors inside out. So that's where that comes from. And if you are still in the market for coloring your piano, feel free to do that and just do it in a way that works for you. And so we're all about what works. So I look for win-win situations. That's how I operate. Okay, so for the D-flat chord, to spell it out for you, we're talking about D-flat, F, A-flat. So if you're counting your two black key groups from the from right to left, you go right, and then you go to the left key of the two black key group, and that's going to be your D-flat. Then to find the F in the middle, go to the three black key group and just count one, two, three. F would be there to the very left of your three black key group. And then A flat, one, two, A flat is right in the middle of your three black key group. So hopefully that gives you that gives you a picture. Okay, I may have to stop and get some water here for a moment. I think I'll do that right now. Back in a moment.
And we're back, and we're live here on CMAJ before the show. That was a longer break than I thought it would take, but I'm back. And so I have my water in front of me so I can take a sip. I think I'm just a little dry today because I had to speak at today's recital. I'll tell you all about that in a moment. But we are on the D-flat chord. Let's go to E-flat now. So if you can find your E chord, let me just turn my music down for a moment. At least I had some music to play for you while I stepped away. But the A chord is, as you know, if you're looking at a chart, especially the chart with the red dots, is spelled E G sharp B. In the popular chord dictionary for piano, they spell it as G sharp B E. It's just inverted. Again, we haven't really covered inversions, but we seem to be talking about them every week. So, uh, I hope you're comfortable with that. But let's just put it in root position so we can see how to lower everything. So if you have it in root position, play it as E, G, sharp, B. So again, it's going to be a vanilla, fudge, vanilla situation. And then move everything a half step lower so that your E becomes E flat. So you move it to the very next key to the left. Same thing with G. G will move to the very next key to the left. No, sorry, G is a black key, and move to the very next key to the left, which becomes a white key. So then you should have E flat, G, and then followed by B flat. So if you're on B, move to the very next key to the left, which is B flat. So then you have, again, vanilla, fudge. Sorry, fudge, vanilla, fudge. So that's the way it's going to be for the A chord as well. So you have A, C sharp, E. You have vanilla, fudge, vanilla, and then you turn it into fudge, vanilla, fudge. And so the A moves to the very next key to the left, which is A flat. And then you have C. And then you have E flat. So hopefully you can find all of that. And then again, just a heads up, if you happen to be in the the popular chord dictionary for piano, don't be too thrown off that they're giving you a different inversion. Okay, now let's take a look in our other chord book. So I just picked this one up. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just, I'm just going to step away to the piano today. I'm not going to be playing on the computer today. I'm going to play on the piano today. I'm not going to play on the computer piano. <laughs> I'm going to play on the digital piano today. Also, the photo that you see for today's live episode is that of a real piano, an acoustic piano. So if you have seen one of those or have experience playing one of those, always exciting to play one of those. I just love it. Okay, so if you turn to page 12, you see an E-flat major chord. In the piano chord finder, they are putting everything in root position, so you could probably see it a little bit easier there. And then, just mosey on over to A flat. Now, this book does not start in ABC order. So, you have to go all the way over to page 22 to find your A flat major chord. And, of course, they did not put it in a root position for you to see it here. But that's okay. On the picture... On the dots, they have it in root position. So they have it by dots, the dot on the middle key of the three black key group as A flat, and then C to the left of your two black key group, and then E flat, which starts the two black key group. So you can see where to put your hands just by looking at the picture, but not looking at the staff. Okay, so that works. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to travel a little bit so you hear some movement on my end and while I'm away let me go ahead and just keep the music going and as we walk away the music is going to fade but the nice thing is when we come back you'll have music okay so just go with me for a moment I'm going to just demonstrate on the piano if you happen to have a piano Get out your piano, or get to your piano if you can. 
It's always fun to play piano. Not that it's not fun playing on a computer keyboard, but it just feels nicer to me to play on a piano. Okay, and in this case, a digital piano. Everybody wants to know what C major is playing. Okay, well, not everybody. A lot of people. Okay, also, you may hear me a little bit further away from the microphone, so not let that bother you. But I'm going to just sound my D chord first. And then I'm going to sound the D flat chord. Okay, so you see how it's moving down a half step? D, moving to D flat. And if you were with me in lessons, I would just literally crawl with you so that you're comfortable seeing how the fingers move in place to get you from D to D flat. So E, and then a half step down to E flat. A, a half step down to A flat. Okay, so hopefully you got all of that. And then the one that we left off that we are introducing for the first time today in the Chords for All series, we're going to talk about B flat. So if you were thinking in terms of vanilla and fudge, B flat is fudge, vanilla, vanilla. So basically you have a B flat and then it's followed by a D and followed by an F. And then what I want to do, possibly next week, introduce some more chords and then we'll talk about B. So that gives you a heads up. You can already start seeing what B looks like and then practicing on the B chord. So that gives you a little bit more of an advantage to next week when we assign the homework. Yes, please see us over at C Major's Classroom for your homework. Did you do your homework? And it's all in fun. It's all in in good humor. And we are now officially CMajorPorter.com for C Major's Classroom. We started off a different way. And I need to see if we can make some updates to the pages for you as well so that you feel like we're growing. So it's all about our growth, but it's all about you and how you're growing too, and how you want to use us and the information that we share here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is play a D. Okay, so that's the sequence I want you to practice. So don't be surprised if I post that over at C Major's Classroom for that. play below middle C. So I'm very excited because, you know, I like to revisit some of these songs that I've learned over the years and and who knows, I may perform them again in public. And so I just got to a point where I thought, you know, I, I've had so much experience with classical music. I really need to start sharing some of this knowledge. And And so I'm very happy to have this podcast because I feel like, I feel like you're learning from from what I can share, and that makes me very happy to to do that. So I'm very happy to do that. I saw it today, too, in the recital with my students. I mean, I'm I'm just almost bursting at the seams to tell you what went on. And so we're going to get to that in a moment. So hopefully you understand how to get to flat chords. I'm going to be coming back to the piano a little bit later. So... When we end today's show, we're ending, but we're not really ending. Now, this is the first time we're doing this on C Major Before the Show. I'm calling it C Major's Footnotes because I wanted to give you something else to work with, and that's where we're going to introduce this quote-unquote hot song that I am I am very excited to share with you. Now, in my opinion, it's a hot song. To you, it may not be a hot song. But in my opinion, it's a hot song, and it's it allows you. It's it's something that we haven't done in the past because I was trying to stay away from pinpointing any particular songs 
that you would use with the chords. I really want to encourage you to write your own original music and then explore cover songs at will. So rather than assign you something to follow and learn by sequence, I'd rather hear, have you hear it for yourself, what goes together. You know, and a perfect example of that was one of my students that played in the New York recital this year, and he made up his own song, and he played what sounded good to him. And so if that included just having a song that focused mainly around C major, that's what he wanted to do, and that's what made him happy, and that was the sound that he wanted. So my appreciation of a particular sound doesn't necessarily have to become yours, but if you appreciate that, that's fine too. But it would be interesting to see which chords you choose, which chords you decide work best for you. But um, I'm very excited because I, I think, you know, when I see this when I see this music and I understand the sequence, I think, okay, I don't know if I would have put it together like that, but it definitely works. It works to the point of putting this, this song on high up on the charts. So anyway, I'm going to step away from the piano now. And again, we'll come back at the very end. And I'm going to do something else that I promised to do. I believe I promised to talk with you about patriotic songs. Now, we didn't say that in the promo, but we're going to look it up because I have taught the Star Spangled Banner, for instance, in the key of A flat. And I've taught My Country Tis of Thee, I believe it was in the key of B flat. And so patriotic songs are easy to teach beginning students, especially if you're learning by chords. So what we'll do is take a look at that online and see what we can find there. So we're back to the music here. Let's get into my computer. It was just a really good day today. I had a nice workout this morning. And then was able to put together a binder so that I could make sure I remembered my talking points for today's recital. And then now I'm here with you on a podcast. Okay, so let's go to the page that I'm looking for. Just bear with me one moment. And thank you so much for tuning in. If it's your first time listening, you're here on C Major Before the Show. We're talking about flat chords today. And I was teasing you when I said, you know, you could bring certain things to drink and eat to the show. Of course, you're always welcome to do that, but I just like to have a little fun with that. By the way, I, I was able to to get my hands on some coconut milk and it was a really good price I hope it's good it was drastically reduced that's how we say it from where I'm from so let's go to the website that I like to rely on okay so we're looking for Star Swingle Banner Okay, so in this case, we've been able to find the Star Spangled Banner in the key of B flat. Let me just turn my music down for a second. Okay, so I'm gonna play the sample for you. But as always, if you if there's something that you want us to share with you, maybe a website or a way to see a visual reference that we don't necessarily provide on our website. I can point you to another website where you can find this information. Now, this is exciting because it has the chords that we're talking about today, B flat. So it's in the key of B flat. And so I can see from the sample that you start off with a B flat chord, then you go to G minor, then you go to a D7 chord. Just make it a D for now because we haven't talked about seven chords yet 
here in the Course for All series, but we're getting there. So the next six weeks will be very useful if you are thinking about going into seven chords, ninth chords, we're going to get to that. We'll talk about some other applications for chords. But the sequence that I'm seeing in front of me now, and you can write this down if you have a pencil and paper and you just want to jot this down, we're talking about B flat, going to G minor, going to a D, going to G minor, going to a C, going to F, going to B flat, going to F, going to B flat, then G minor, D, G minor, C, F. So the key to playing the Star Spangled Banner in this case is to find out where the changes happen according to the words that you're saying. Okay, so if you happen to be saying, oh, say, then B flat will be on the word say. And then when you say, can you see, then you're talking about a G minor chord. And then by would be a D chord. The dons would be G minor. Early, the second syllable of early would be a C, followed by light, which would be F. What so proudly, on the word proud, you're going to go to B flat. We held, hell is F, at the twilights. Okay, so when you go to twilights, it's B flat. That's gleaming. Whose broad stripes and bright stars, G minor on stars, through goes to D. The perilous, G minor, well, perilous, when you say lus, perilous, then C, and then fight. F. Okay, so I hope you found that helpful. I mean, really just try to line up the words with the chord changes, and I think you'll be okay. And then again, if you needed some help with finding your B flat chord, just go to your piano chord finder, and then you'll see B flat. Now, a funny thing just happened with my mouse and my cursor. It's like crawling across the computer on its own. I haven't even touched it. It's so funny. Okay. Let's go to B flat chord in the piano chord finder. Let's see what they did. Yep, looks like they give it to you in root position. Yay, that's good. Okay, so B flat is the symbol. The chord name is B flat major. And then you can say B flat D F. And then what we'll do on tomorrow's episode of the C major radio show, we will step into our use of the staff and writing things down clearly and just getting to a place where We can see what it would look like on the staff. That's the whole point of the show, really, is to start over here, getting you to do something very friendly in terms of letter names, in terms of text. Oh, by the way, you know, I think I mentioned this on C Major, on the C Major radio show, but I wanted to say it here as well. I know I'm standing on the shoulders of a lot of great teachers and pedagogues and and, and music educators and people who are really pioneers in the field. And I'm so grateful because because of you, I'm able to do what I do. And I'm able to, to say the things that I say here on the podcast. Really hope it's, it's helpful to someone listening. What we will do in the future, we'll try to honor those people a little bit more by pointing out some of the research that has been done, especially on chords and what has been done to teach people to play by rote, whatever the case happened to be back in those times. And and I'm very excited about that because I think, you know, I come from a background in global research. And so 
that's what I'm supposed to be doing, <laughs> rather than just making everything anecdotal and and just just talking off the top of my head all the time. I think that it it would be useful for the podcast and and respectful to those who've gone on before me to say, you know, this person did this and they found this and so I will be exploring those archives. Thank you to the person who who reminded me of that in an email recently. It came across my desk, so I I definitely plan to do that here on the podcast. Uh, We haven't been that research heavy, but I think what we'll do is just start making some more real footnotes when it comes to when it comes to the podcast and, and making it more global research focused. It's just that I don't want to overwhelm you too much with that. I wanted to keep it easy and kind of light and free falling so you can feel comfortable. Okay, now let's step out of this page. And and I'm just going to say, you know, I I, I hesitated when it came to bringing up patriotic songs. So I recommend taking a look at the Star Spangled Banner. Take a look at My Country Tis of Thee and take a look at Battle Hymn of the Republic because those were like the top three patriotic songs that I was able to teach my students and it worked well. So in addition to other fun songs that you hear with marching band like Yankee Doodle around this time of year, we are talking about Memorial Day So now I'm going to look that up because I just wanted to say something formal about that. Memorial Day is a federal holiday. So if you were hoping to go to the library today, forget about it. The library is closed, especially in the greater New York City area. And and so near the George Washington Bridge, there are signs posted closed Saturday, Sunday, and Monday And in the case of the library. So it's a Memorial Day is a federal holiday in the United States for remembering and honoring people who died while serving in the United States Armed Forces. So that's the thing. I said, you know, it's going to be a funny weekend and not so funny weekend because this is serious business. I watched a program last night on television. I was so touched by this this one person who was in the Armed Forces and he was just describing all the things that happened to him you know, as as he was as he was serving, and it's just very touching. A lot of touching stories out there. So the holiday is observed every year on the last Monday of May, and so that's what we are remembering. It's a remembrance of American service members who have died in armed conflicts. So that's the meaning of Memorial Day today. So thank you so much for tuning in, and then Fleet Week. Is coinciding coinciding with that. So I talked with someone today who, well, not today, a couple of days ago, who used to talk about her participation in Fleet Week with the sailors. So there is, just so you know, in New York City, the parade of ships, which you've been hearing about on online. So... That parade of ships kicked off Fleet Week in New York, and so um, if you know if if this is something that interests you, you know, feel free to go online. You can find it. More than a dozen ships paraded through the Hudson River on Wednesday for the start of the U.S. Armed Forces Annual Fleet Week, the 31st annual installment of the week-long event highlighting the U.S. Navy, Marines and Coast Guard kicked off with a parade of ships which saw vessels travel from Battery Park to the George Washington Bridge. So that must have been something to see. And I'm betting that there's some music involved. So even though, even though it doesn't say in this article, you know, I'm just interested to know what music was played while all of this was going on. So you are here again on C Major Before the Show. Thank you so much for joining us and join us at the end of today's podcast because we'll end the podcast and then we'll come back again and surprise you with something I'm calling C Major's Footnotes. 
And that's because I want to just demonstrate on piano how to put some of these flat chords to use using one of the hottest songs out right now that involves a piano and flat chords. I always get really excited when I hear a recording with piano. And I'm also very excited about somebody I met over the weekend as, as well who, who was talking to me about recording piano. So lots of exciting things happening. We'll talk to you about that and more coming up right here on C Major Before the Show. for tuning in today. Now we're going to turn our attention to the recital that took place over the weekend and give some shout outs to some very deserving students, I think. I'm going to say first names today. I don't normally do that, but I'm going to say first names. But I won't say the last names, and then we'll just talk about some of the pieces that were played in in the recital. But I had a chance today to I was very honored, let me say, to host the Musica 2019 Music Lessons Recital. And it was very, very nice, just beautiful, with families coming out to hear the students play. There were some new families there. There were some first-time performers there. When we say first-time performers, we're talking about ages five and six that have never played their instruments in public in front of anyone before. And everybody was just a champion, in my opinion. So, you know, we were all good friends in the space and, and just encouraging the students to grow. And And I just reminded them that the recital is supposed to remind you of how far you've come. So it's not necessarily about competition or getting a trophy or anything like that. It's just to feel welcome to feel like you're in a safe space, and also to have fun. So I think that was definitely the case for this year's recital. Each student performed their piece or pieces, and we were able to recognize the students by saying their names and what they were playing, and and the parents were just really supportive, the families that were there. And nobody's mobile device went off, just so respectful. They just kept it really cool and calm and they just really, I think, had an enjoyable time. And it was right around an hour that we were together. And it didn't run too long. It didn't run too short. A couple of students weren't able to make it. But I just want to give a shout out to all of those students. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. And so let me just share a little bit further about some of the things that went on. And I will say the first names of the students, so just bear with me. I'm not sure they're listening to this podcast. I didn't really invite them to. But in the future, if it comes down to it and they are in a position to listen, I always invite the students and their parents and their families to listen along and see if they can get something out of the podcast. And so... We had a student by the name of Faith that performed today. Mateo was there. Giancarlo was there. Michelle was there. Sean was there. Aisha was there. Thomas was there. Isha. Tiffany. Arev was there. Joseph was there. Owen was there. And Evelyn was there. And then we had a couple of students that didn't make it, but that's okay. And some of the pieces that were played were very impressive. We're talking about everything from Chopin to Joplin to Bach. So the prelude in C major was played. The entertainer, a student, one of the more advanced students, performed this waltz in B minor, Opus 69, number 2 by Chopin. 
And then I had a student that played Star Wars and, and Yoda's theme. Another student that was very enthusiastic about performing Let It Go, the Demi Lovato version. So she's a big fan of Disney and Frozen. And so uh, it was just very exciting. A couple more pieces that you may know. We had the standard Old MacDonald had a farm. We didn't have Yankee Doodle this year. Last year, I think we had Yankee Doodle. I wasn't even there, and I got told the parents, this is not something that I normally go to. I've gone to recital in the past, and it seems that it scaled back a little bit, but it was still a good time. And so there are some other pieces that the students played that weren't as popular. And I'm finding out now that the parents are starting to trust teachers a little bit more with saying, okay, will trust you to choose a, a recital piece that's appropriate for the student rather than saying, okay, we want to hear our son or daughter play this because our family is excited about that song. Some pieces aren't as recital friendly as others. And at the same time, some pieces aren't as piano friendly. So to put it in the words of one parent, some pieces just don't, just don't translate well to the piano and I couldn't have said it any better you know that's true so if you have if you have a if you have a a daughter or son taking piano lessons and used to be a headbanger yourself and you want to hear your child play some music by Metallica just know it may not translate that well to the piano not picking on headbangers not picking on you know rock music or Metallica or anything like that I'm just saying that sometimes you need to find the piece that really, really works. Now, what was exciting about this recital, and I haven't been in a while, like I said, but we started off the recital with, with percussion students. So you had drums, and you know what? I have a recording. I'm going to try to play that recording on, well, let me say, I'm going to try to post the recording. I have to listen to it first and make sure the audio was, was picking up what it needed to pick up because I had to put the device at a certain distance so it wouldn't pick up too much of the drums and be too hot on on the on the microphone. But I'm going to listen back and see if it's something I can post. If not, then I will just play it you know, from, from my device and then just give you a clip of that. So I may post that this weekend, as soon as this weekend, or I may end up posting a clip of it with within our next promo. I'll figure it out. It's going to be something. I mean, I'm really excited about Spreaker giving us the option to edit our podcast in a way that we can do whatever we want now. We can edit out the, the ahs and the ums, and we can edit out just dead air at the beginning and at the end, just things that are not as professional sounding when you edit. So I know for a fact that I, for a fact, I have friends that, that do radio and they know all about the importance of editing and I've learned a lot from them. So I hope to tighten, I hope to tighten up on that in the future, but thank you, Spreaker. Thank you for that. That's, that's really great. Thank you so much. So we kicked off the recital with drums, and then we went into piano, and then we had a voice student, which was very, very nice. And I was just really impressed by the technical aspect of the whole recital. It was the first time I've seen where we were able to move from one thing to the next almost seamlessly, and and there were no technical issues. So very, very little technical issues. It just flowed. So very, very excited about this year's recital. So let's see what else I wanted to point out here. And definitely a shout out to Musica for everything that they did to make this year's recital successful. I gave a shout out to the parents as well and the families and the teachers. Now there were some participating teachers, one of whom I met, and we were waiting for the others to show up and that's what I what I was saying earlier that not too many just dropped my programs. Not too many teachers really show up at the recitals. It's it's 
it's supposed to be for our families and their students and everybody's just coming together. But it was very exciting to host. I kind of put my feet to the fire a little bit. And I was a little bit nervous, I have to say. And then I calmed down, and then I was calm the rest of the time. So looking back on it, it was a great experience. I'm very, very grateful for that, and I hope I was able to to make everyone feel welcome. So what did I want to say next? Let's see. Just looking at my notes here. It's so important to have the support of your parents and your relatives and your friends when it comes to the recital. Okay. Just looking at my notes. Oh, I know what I wanted to say next. I wanted to say something about the colleague that I met at this recital. So one of the teachers happens to have his own band. So I wanted to take a look at that with you right here on C Major Before the Show. And the reason for that is that you're listening and you may know of someone who needs recording services. And this particular teacher does that. So not only is he an expert in the field of percussion and piano and specializes in jazz, he also has his own recording studio. So I'm hoping to check out both. I'm hoping to check out the band and I'm hoping to check out the recording aspect of everything. Let's see, I'm trying to pull this up now. It's not really coming up for me. Maybe I need to use a different browser. Okay, so just give me a few moments. I'm going to see if I can pull up this information, and I'll be right back. You're listening to C Major Before the Show. Okay, and I'm back. So I was able to pull that up. Sorry for those audio breaking up things that were happening. I don't know what was going on. (laughs) But that's what happens when you start working with professional audio. Okay, now, this website, you want to check this out. I'm just just really giving this, this, this professional music teacher, musician, however you want to say it. He's definitely into music making. He's making the best music he can make. And shout out to the Bazani Band 
I'm giving them some air time today. And it looks like it's pronounced one way, but I know from meeting this person, it's Mikhail, the Mikhail Bazzani Band. So music inspired by the heartbeat, which sounds kind of nice, nice idea. So there you can read the bio, you can read the events, you can read the... Um, the events that are coming up. Okay, so he was saying there's something coming up on June 13th. And the reason I'm sharing this, you know, is because I really have been hoping to meet some of the other teachers that do what I do, that don't mind, quote-unquote, networking. And it's not even about the networking part. I, I think that sometimes that work gets overused and you think you have to just start handing out business cards and and really hoping to, to get something out of the relationship that will benefit you. But it's really about just saying, you know what, can we have a conversation over coffee? Which I'm very excited about because he's Italian and I'm thinking he's got to love espresso. So I'm looking forward to that. And then I want to hear more about Milan and I want to hear about what's going on with coffee culture in Milan. So... And speaking of Milan, didn't I say something about Shelter After Hours? So one of my favorite house music songs, and I love Deep House, is by uh, a singer with the last name Milan. Okay, so live clips. I'm not going to play this because I don't know if if I play it, then I'm going to get an email saying, you know what, you just played blah, blah, blah. And so... It just alerts you that you play something. But if you have a chance, look at now. Another place I wanted to go was on Facebook. And by the way, I meant to post something from Eric Church. Because remember, we had our interview with Jess, the follow-up interview. And she was very excited about this particular artist. So I may, if I have a chance to listen to it, go ahead and post the link to that as well, but I'll post it on our Facebook page. So if you happen to be over at Facebook and you see uh, C Major Before the Show, which is a public page, feel free to stop by and see what we're doing over there. So much to look at. Let me just click here for a moment. And then I want to see if I can find this particular teacher slash musician on Facebook while I have you on. I like doing things with you on the podcast live, so I want to encourage you to do the same thing. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is see if I can search for Bazani Band. Dot com. I can hardly wait to hear this band. It just sounds so sounds so professional. Okay, so see if I can add as a friend. Oh, he said at the University of Pisa. Hmm. Okay, so friend request sent. Now I'm gonna take a look at the page and then um we put in the request and hopefully hopefully he accepts. And then for some reason it um it doesn't go through and I don't know why it wouldn't go through then. Then we can still keep in touch um, because I do have the, the business card. So anyway, so shout out to Mikhail. And then what I'm going to say now is hang on because we're going to end the C Major Before the Show episode. We'll say our goodbyes. We'll say we'll usually say make the base, best music you can make and make the best music. And then we're going to go into our footnotes. So I'm going to try to plot the information I'm going to be using for that part uh, as we end today's as today as we end today's show. 
Okay, so in summary, today's show was all about flat chords. If you have a chance to check our sources, check our syllabus online, and and just see what you can do with those chords. And I do encourage you to make the best music you can make. Keep well and, and take care of yourselves out there. And every opportunity you have to, to play something original on the piano, we encourage that too. We also encourage you to, to explore songs as you go, songs that are interesting to you where you can put some of these chords to use and then who knows in the future we we may even put together a package of of suggested songs for you to try because I definitely have some songs in my head that I want to see you try you have been listening to C Major here on C Major Before the Show and then we'll see you next week right here tune in because I haven't decided where we'll go next week I have an idea but I'll see you next time right here on C Major Before the Show Okay, so that was our official ending, but we haven't ended yet. We are going to go now into our unofficial C Major's footnotes. And this is the part where I want to introduce you to a song that I was definitely excited about this week. Let me see if I can pull it up on this other web browser, since my other browser seems to be failing me right now. I was wondering if I could play this on GarageBand, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to do it on my digital piano. So what you're going to hear now is hearing me go back to the piano. And again, I'm not going to announce the song. I'm just going to announce the chords that I'm using. Now, what's coming up next for the next six weeks here on C Major Before the Show? So excited. We're going to be talking about the use of other chords. So next week probably will be another group of chords that I'll introduce, chords that we haven't talked about yet. Then we'll talk about seven chords. Then we'll talk about split bass chords. Then we'll talk about, you know, how to uh, play ninth chords and, and, and maybe something else. But we have another six weeks to go. So let me figure out what's going to work best for you. I think we'll just do a lesson in inversions. But see, there's just so much you can do with chords. And then once you understand how to hear them, and then if you want to know how to write them down, see us over at C Major at the C Major Radio Show. If you want to know how to use these same chords in in classical music, I did post something on Facebook from one of the experts, the world's greatest experts, one of the world's greatest experts that talks about the use of chords, how to perform those chords, and then he gives you certain classical pieces where those chords are, are played. So just just very, very, very keen on the performance practice of chords when it comes to classical music. That's not what I do. I, I can talk about it with somebody, but what I'm trying to do for you is just get you to just play chords, period, and then see what you can do with them. I have a certain interest in popular music and folk music and, and other simple songs because I think that works for I would say, in my opinion, 99% of everybody that's trying to play the piano because of some sort of inspiration that they found to want to do that. So now I'm pulling up this this song. And you can do this too. So let's say if you wanted to know what a song sounds like, there's a page that you can follow where it just pulls up literally the first page for you to print as a sample, and then you can go into other pages. So I pulled it up. Let me just see if I can step away. Let me take my music down. And you are listening to the first time in the history of C Major Before the Show, C Major's footnotes. And what that means is that we're going to play something on the piano. Now, I thought I would bring my metronome with me, and I thought, eh, I'm not going to do that. In the future, I'll do that. In the future, when I play classical pieces for you just for fun and we're still figuring out a way to do that too because I feel like my classical skills are a little bit rusty 
but I want to do my very best and show you what I'm able to do. Okay, so I'm disconnecting a little bit of my audio here, and then I'm taking it off all the way, taking away my connections, and then you're going to hear some movement again. Let me just get a sip of water first. Okay, so what I'm aiming to do right now is take you back to my digital piano and then demonstrate for you the use of the use of flat chords. How to put those chords to use. And I was just looking because I know when I saw the the labeling of the chords, I just thought, hmm, I don't know if I would have labeled them that way. I just really want to talk with the person who, because you know, the recording is always primary, and then the sheet music is always secondary. Okay, so I did this earlier in the week. Turn my piano on. Okay, so this is where it gets exciting because this lets you know where we're headed in the in the chorus. In the 12 week chord series, we're headed to seven chords and major seventh chords. So if you need to look up your own major seventh chord database, for instance, I recommend that you do that. Now, it starts off with a G flat major seventh chord, something we haven't even talked about in this chord series yet. If you had to play, you can play a G flat chord. What I found exciting was that, and I taught you today, the B flat chord, right? The triad. If you made that B flat minor, I encourage you to do that. So all of those major chords that we introduced today, the D to D flat, the E to E flat, the A to A flat, the B flat, don't go B to B flat yet because next week we're going to talk about B. But I would say definitely go into the minors of those. So what I found exciting was that I probably would have tried to label this as a B flat minor chord over a G flat bass. Okay. And when I play it like that, when I isolate it like that, it also... It also reminds me of that, that piece by Sati, um, you know, the classical piece. So, um, okay. But a major seventh chord is a major seventh chord is a major seventh chord if you play it that way. But you can also think of it as a minor chord over a different bass. So a B, B flat minor chord over a G flat. But if you play it this way, then you would think of it as a G flat chord with the seventh added, which happens to be major, as opposed to playing it, you know, as a G flat major chord, expand it, and then you just make it a major seventh chord, okay? So that's how it starts out. Do you like that sound? I hope you do. Okay, I just find chords really exciting. Okay. So in the future, just to let you know, for C major's footnotes, we're going to be talking about chords that you can find in classical music, in R&B, and some other 20th century music that I'm familiar with and how they use chords. So I could demonstrate that now, but I don't want to get too off course. So let me just go back here to my computer. Okay. So imagine you're going from a G flat chord to an A flat chord over a B flat bass. Okay. So those split bass chords, which we will be talking about at some point in the next six weeks, I mean, are very exciting. So that's what gospel music is known for, those split bass chords, which sound very, very exciting. But you can find it in other music too. When I hear this sound right here, I think about 
you know, music of the 70s, like Shaft and, and music, you know, the soundtrack to, you know, some of the that 70s music where it just sounds really, you know, exciting, you know. You know, the rhythmic things they used to do. Okay, and then going to, back to, going to B-flat. Okay, so I know you're excited about that because now you get to go to a B-flat triad. You can invert it if you want. So we'll also be talking about inversions coming up. So now you have something to really think about. Okay, I think I'll keep listening to the podcast because we're going to be talking about all these exciting things. So far, we talked about G-flat. We talked about A-flat over B-flat, B-flat, G-flat, a flat over B flat and then B flat. And then again, I think, you know, because we haven't talked about seven chords, I probably would have just given to you the idea of playing a B flat minor chord over a G flat bass, you know, until we got to major seven. So I haven't really decided chicken and egg, what's gonna come first? Is will I talk about seven chords first or will I talk about split bass chords first? Probably talk about seven chords first. But either way, this is a way that you can digest it if you just think, okay, what exactly is this? This is another way to play this. Okay. So let me just go back here one more time. Okay. So what you're going to hear now is you're going to hear just the sequence of the chord changes itself. So I'm going to go from a G flat to A flat over B flat to B flat back to G flat back to A flat over B flat and then to B flat. And then if you care to, you can say, okay, I'm going from a B flat minor over G flat to an A flat over B flat to a B flat to a G to a B flat minor over G flat to an A flat over B flat and then a B flat. So the thing we're going to explain when we talk about split bass chords is that you're not playing two separate chords. You're just playing one triad or chord over a different bass. Okay, so we'll say a little, little bit more about that in, in the future. But again, this is a sneak preview. You're listening to C Major's footnotes. Okay, so listen to the sequence. Okay. So then the rhythm that they put with that, and I'll just play the right hand part. song starts. So it was really just the intro. Now, here's where I have to test my R&B scales or skills and upbeat gospel funk feel, however you want to say it. And, you know, just make sure that I'm playing the left hand so that can be felt a little bit more rhythmically. But that's something I'm going to practice. So, you know what? I'm going to play you out, if you will. And just keep on listening. Thank you so much for tuning in to C Major Before the Show. You've been listening to C Major's Footnotes to end out the show. And we're just going to play you out and just have some fun. And I'll see you next week right here on C Major Before the Show. Thank you for listening.